The Seattle Mariners just wrapped up a three-game series against the Cleveland Guardians in Seattle, which wraps up a seven-game homestand to begin the year. They are currently three and four after going one and two against the Guardians. I'll send it over to Luis Castillo for a recap. All right, well, thanks for that, Luis. The Mariners have had their issues to start the season. They are currently three and four, as I mentioned. They have a negative 14 run differential after this series against the Red Sox and the Guardians. And it really all comes down to their approach at the plate and their defense. The pitching, I'm not worried about one bit. Luis Castillo has been touched up a bit in his first two starts. George Kirby today gave up a career high eight runs. All of them were earned and didn't even make it out of the third inning. But rather than putting this on George or Luis Castillo over the past couple nights, I put this on the Guardians offense and it shows what can happen when you just put the bat on the ball. As the broadcast was stating all series long, the Guardians are just one of those pesky teams. They were dinking and dunking, dunking their hits. And honestly, watching their at-bats, I don't know if the Mariners really have an approach at the plate right now. They're swinging at first pitch breaking balls. They're watching stuff down the middle for strike three. There was talks of the offensive coordinator that was added to the Mariners staff this offseason and that how that would help the offense. There's been little to no small ball. JP Crawford was, I believe, the only person that got a bunt single. Julio Rodriguez running through the stop sign that was given by the third baseman as he was thrown out at home plate. And the Seattle Mariners, as of right now, through seven games, have the worst on-base plus slugging in all of baseball. They are currently third worst in batting average, third worst in on base percentage, second worst in slugging, and again, the worst team in all of baseball at getting on base and doing damage. If you look at the lineup statistics from top to bottom, JP Crawford with the 115 batting average, Julio Rodriguez is batting 185, Jorge Polanco out there looks like he doesn't know what he's doing, he's batting 154. The only two bright spots in the lineup as of right now are Mitch Hanniger, he looks like he is definitely back. Mitch Hanniger has a 261 batting average, and then the driveline Ty France has been producing as well. Dominic Canzone, who started essentially every game for the Mariners so far, is batting two for 17 with eight strikeouts. I made a short the other day after he hit his first home run of, hey, it's a Dominic Canzone breakout season. Luke Rayley is gonna have to get a lot more looks in left field in these next couple series. Mitch Garver hasn't looked all that great, batting 143. And then there's Dylan Moore in the platoon of Luis Arias and Josh Rojas in the ninth spot. The Mariners are tied for second in all of baseball with 74 strikeouts on the year, tied with the St. Louis Cardinals. And they're only behind the Los Angeles Dodgers by two strikeouts who have played one more game than the Mariners. The Mariners are averaging 10 and a half strikeouts per game as a team. And there was an article just released by the Seattle Times where Jerry DePoto stated that it's too early to panic about the Mariners' slow start. DePoto said, I wish we hadn't struck out so much. We have faced a lot of good edge pitches that are frankly really good pitches that you can't sit there and whine about. The opposing pitchers made really good pitches. Our guys don't feel like we're at DEFCON 1. They're at the end of week one, and we had a slow week offensively. This article by Adam Jude states that the scouting report is out on Mariners hitters, and it's effectively the same as it was last year. They can't hit the breaking ball. Boston and Cleveland pitchers, DePoto said, deserve credit for being able to execute that plan. DePoto went on to say that I'll count this week as something of an anomaly in the way we have been approached. Nobody hits the good, well-placed breaking ball. Nobody. And if you do it, you probably don't do it consistently. And we saw a lot of that for six days. The unique part of the start to our season is we opened up against roughly six consecutive pitchers who all have exceptional ability to spin the ball. And in some of those cases, exceptional ability to spin it and to locate it. And that's the thing that Cleveland Shane Bieber does as good as anybody. You don't get a lot of fastballs to hit against those teams. And when we did get fastballs to hit, for the most part, we did what you're supposed to do with them. Another thing to note from this article that I haven't mentioned yet is that Dallas Keuchel, former Cy Young Award winner, was signed by the Mariners to a minor league contract. This article states that DePoto says he expects starting pitcher Brian Wu, who's been out with elbow inflammation, to return sometime in late April or early May. Until then, he wanted to bring in a veteran with big league experience as rotation depth, and the Mariners found a perfect match for that in Dallas Keuchel. Keuchel is now 36 years old, will be reporting to AAA Tacoma, and DePoto said if Brian Wu, with the injury scare we had with Brian Wu, it did raise a flag of concern. We've already tapped into our sixth starter, and just making sure that there is insurance when we go to the next wave of pitchers. Nobody stays healthy for the entire year. There was a lot of talk in spring that the players know that these games in April and early in the year matter just as as much as the games at the end of the year. After all, last year in 2023, the Mariners missed 
missed the playoffs by just one game. The Mariners made the playoffs in 2022, but in 2021, they missed the playoffs by just two games. It is very early in the year, but now is the time for things to start clicking for the Mariners. They have an off day tomorrow, and then they'll be starting their first road series of the year. They'll have three games in Milwaukee, followed by three games in Toronto, followed by another off day next Thursday. And then they'll start their next homestand, which will be against the Cubs and the Reds on Friday the 12th. And the Mariners will see their fair share of breaking balls even in the series against the Brewers, as the first game on Friday will be against the former Mariners prospect and current Brewers ace, Freddy Peralta. He has an exceptional slider and changeup, and then their second game on Saturday will come against D.L. Hall. It is a very long season, I'm still very optimistic, but let me know your thoughts in the comments below on the Mariners so far and on their upcoming series. Make sure to like and subscribe to the Couch DM to stay up to date on all things baseball and the Seattle Mariners, and I'll see you next time.